Oh, I see <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to give you my presentation on the care and feeding of Firefox. Huh? You've had some work done, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> I've gotten taller. Is it shorter? <laughs> like cats? Pardon? Like cats? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Well, in everything that says Steve Levine and Associates, I'm the Associates. <clears throat> um, next slide. Okay. First of all, a little summary about what Firefox is. Uh, first of all, just for your interest, we really legally can't call it Firefox because this is a port, and so it has to be called something else, which is something they're looking at right now. Uh, Firefox, I doubt, is ever going to come after us, or the Mozilla Foundation is ever going to come after us, but just a little aside on that, because it's obviously a Mozilla Foundation browser. Um, of course, it's, a, it's based on one of the extended release cycles, which means that they didn't change the number for four days instead of the usual two. <coughs> Um, so, and what it really means is they still are, s I think support has been dropped for this particular one, but they were still making bug fixes for a more prolonged period of time after they had moved on to 46. <coughs> um, and it was basically this first existed in April of 2017. So, it is getting a little old. Um, <clears throat> the, there are a couple of different versions of it out at this point. Um, Bitwise Works, for good reason, stopped working on it so that they could move on to QT5. And <clears throat> what work is being done on it is being done by Dave Yale. Um, and these are the places you can get them. Um, I recommend you use Dave's um, builds because he has worked out a few of the bugs. And the one that's SUA1, what, they did, what he did was he, back, he ported some security fixes from the old um, Mac operating system version, which is also stuck on the 45.9, but they had brought in some security fixes, and he went back and picked up all those security fixes. So this browser is more secure. One other note on this, though. I read his post from a couple of days ago, and I also experienced it. The SUA1 traps on certain websites. There is an SUA2 which the last time I checked wasn't up on Bitbucket, but he had said that he fixed the trap and built it. So if you go out and get it, you want the SUA2 version rather than take all the time to download the one just to find out that you need to upgrade it. <clears throat> um, obviously, what you want to look at is the, RP the RPM requirements make sure you have them all. If you're upgrading from 30, 38, whatever, whatever we currently have on with Argo OS, um, there's one library that's, that you have to upgrade or you have to get, which is libvx something um, <clears throat> in order to install it and have it run. There may be some other optional things that have to do with the multimedia stuff that you want to get. But just make sure you read all the requirements and check on all of those sorts of things. The 7-zip and the RPM version both get installed into the Unix root tree on your drives. And you pretty much have to accept that. If you don't want to do that, or if you're going to just install it where you have it currently installed, you'll want to get the zip file version. <coughs> and again, like I said, you'll probably want to get Dave's, and I believe it only comes as a zip file version. <laughs> and instructions for installing from RPM, it's really pretty straightforward. You open 
Argano package manager point, pointed at Firefox and tell it to install it. And it, of course, will get all your dependencies and everything for you. That's the one advantage of using it. Um, I also saw that they're working on, well, I'll get to that in a minute. They're working on an installer which will do some of this for you. Um, <clears throat> you want to get high mem or header or exe header. Exe header is actually automatically installed by um, Arc OS and uh, high mem is in the um, open office tree. Both of them, what they do is they mark the D DLLs so that they can be loaded up into high memory. This, with this particular version, is essentially what you're going to have to do. You get, depending on what else you're running, you'll get anywhere from 48 to maybe 100 hours of uptime before it'll exhaust your low memory and you'll have the get to reboot and start over again. And the only workaround is to put the DLLs up into high memory. <clears throat> the problem with that is that you can't unload them. Well, you can unload them, but the memory that they use doesn't get freed. And that's a kernel defect. So if you constantly load them and unload them, you'll exhaust high memory. There's a workaround, though, fortunately, for that. The Dave Yeo has created a set of Mo's Turbo utilities. You're probably all familiar with that because a number of years ago there was a Mo's Turbo. And what it was, what it's designed to do is just make Firefox load faster, the Mozilla browsers load faster. Because what it does is it preloads all the DLLs. Well, the advantage to it at this point, and there's one, you, you see the one that's FF Turbo, there's also an SM Turbo and a TB Turbo. And you can actually load all three of them from your startup folder at the same time. I happen to load Firefox and ZMonkey, both of them. And what that does is you now have your DLLs marked to load high. The turbos load them, but when you run CMonkey, it just uses them. But when you close CMonkey, it doesn't unload the DLLs because the turbos are still holding them in memory. And that way, the problem with the fact that the memory doesn't get released essentially goes away because you're never asking it to be released. And there are <clears throat> there are people that are running all three of them, the turbos for all three of them simultaneously, and I haven't seen reports of any problems at all. I've had Monkey running continuously for over a month without a trap and without exhausting my memory since I started doing this. <coughs> <coughs> You can see you want to create a program object. It's better to detach it. That way you don't see it on your um, program lists and things like that. Um, that's, that in and of itself isn't essential. The dash or the minus L, is, it just means load. And it doesn't load the DLs entirely. It um, just reserves the memory for them, basically. Um, there's also a, a minus T, which is the actual turbo, and it fully loads all of them. So if you're doing it just for the memory problem, the minus L is fine. If you're doing it because you want to try to speed the lo loading of the first time you load CMonkey or Firefox, you should use that, the minus T. <clears throat> it's always a good idea to start with a new profile, it's something that I violate every time. So far I've gotten away with it, but uh, <clears throat> it's still a good idea. And if you do have problems when you initially start it up, you do want to go ahead and start with a 
new pro that's the first thing to do is to create a new profile and make sure that that doesn't just fix your problem okay these are some preferences that at least Stephen uses since I don't use the since I don't bother to go in and set any of them or if I set them I set them 10 years ago um, <clears throat> I will just simply take his word for that for these particular parameters there's also in Firefox a problem with uh, heavy processor usage that the processor will spike and there are several reasons that that has happened um, one of them relates to the Firefox theme its default theme people have said that if you change the theme to one of the ones listed here that that tends to get rid of the CPU spikes also there have been reports that if you start loading a browser page and then immediately minimize Firefox that that will do it that you'll even after the page has loaded it will continue spiking so you don't want to quickly do that um, adblock ultimate I don't use it what I recommend is the hosts file you can go out and look on just search for um, ad blocking hosts file and you'll you'll be able to pull up the site for that and all you do is just put that in as your host file and what it does is it's a huge long list of all the different ad related sites and it um, basically aliases them to um, the address 0.0.0.0 .0 which of course is nowhere and so you don't get taken to those sites and it works very nicely the only kind of drawback if, is you'll have to go out and up, re-update it periodically to get the latest and the greatest the uh, advantage of using that one over the ad blocker is that mo there are a lot of websites which detect if you're using an ad blocker and uh, won't let you in or will complain at you. Most of them, at least, that I've encountered don't detect the host file trick. And this is a list of places to find extensions, and this is important to us because the main Mo Mozilla extension site is of no value to us anymore because they don't have anything on it that will work with this old version of Firefox so you want to check out some of these other sites um, <clears throat> again this is a set of um, recommended settings I can't speak to whether they're any faster or not but particularly if you're frustrated by the rate at which your pages load it's probably worth trying them to see if they do include improve the speed um, <clears throat> the hundred percent CPU utilization or the CPU spikes obviously is a known issue it probably relates to a change um, VGA has a feature called vSync which it tells that it tells the computer when it's starting to load a frame and if you time loading of everything or repaints in the browsers to that frame everything runs more smoothly the problem is is OS 2 has no idea what that is and um, Lars actually looked at the possibility of creating a driver for it and found out that some VGA cards don't actually support it so it nobody could ever figure it out so basically they turned it off but a lot of the code sort of expects it so that was one of the issues and for that reason if you leave a site with animated GIFs as the, as the tab that's viewable doesn't matter whether you can actually see it in other words, it can be on a completely different pager page 
it doesn't have to be on the screen, but that that's the one out, that will cause the spikes too. And the so solution is simple, switch to another tab <coughs> and they go away. Um, but that relates to that V-Sync issue. And then the theme, which also might relate to it because it's potentially a painting issue. And like I said before, don't minimize Firefox while it's doing stuff. Um, you know, it's always wonderful to go on the site where they're developing the software. This is on GitHub. GitHub throws a banner across the top of Firefox telling you that you've got an out-of-date browser <laughs> and that it's not supported. There it doesn't really matter because I can just hit a button that says ignore, it goes away, and GitHub works fine. But you may want to override the user agent. Same thing for logon issues. You know, sometimes, yeah, they really do need the newer functionality. Uh, sometimes I suppose they're just concerned about security issues because obviously these browsers aren't as secure as the new ones, or at least as people think the new ones are. <laughs> these are a couple of links that just will give you more information about setting up profiles, about what the different user settings mean, those sorts of things. So, thank you. And it is beautiful here in Southern California. <laughs> <laughs>